Hi guys, welcome back to another Matchbox Garage video. I'm Rob and today I shall be attempting to take this Yatming Cadillac Fleetwood Brougham from Shabby to Shiny. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that word. Brougham? Brougham? Um, please let me know down in the comments. Uh, but yeah, this one is one of those which I've been doing recently and enjoying actually. Uh, it was an unboxing video, but this car kind of, I thought... I could do better than what Yang Yat Ming has done here, um, and I'm going to customize or restore it straight away. So the unboxing section is at the end of this video. Please do go and watch it. Uh, Steve Miller over from uh, Switzerland, uh, the first package I've ever received from Switzerland, uh, kindly donated um, this plus many others. So yeah, check it out. But uh, I hope you enjoy this one, and with 2,000 likes, it could be yours. So here it is. The build quality of the Atming is not bad, but it's certainly not great. As you can see, the wheels there, a little bit on the old flimsy side, but it does have opening doors. It's got some funky uh, Cadillac uh, paint over there. But yeah, underneath, you can see that it does read Yakming Cadillac Fleetwood. That word that I don't know how to pronounce, but uh, number 1053, made in Hong Kong. Uh, but uh, having pre-drilled the two rivets on this one, we'll take out the axles here. Uh, they won't be remaining, we'll put some nicer wheels in today. And the interior, not bad, I actually quite liked the colour of this, I don't even know what, what colour is that? peachy kind of color perhaps but looking at it now in the color that I've actually painted the car it really suits it the interior glass a little bit of a crack at the top there but thankfully not visible and it has like a, a blue tint but again it's not visible on the casting as I look at it to my side the front here in plastic and that'll just pop off And then what I'll do is I shall be removing the chrome paint from that and reapplying it again shortly. My camera there not wanting to focus, but there we are on the third attempt. So let's uh, remove the wheels. This little kind of retaining spring actually worked really well and kind of simple in its design, but perhaps better than some of the others out there. And those are the doors. And then we'll be taking this little spring and putting it to one side. I shan't be putting that into the uh, paint stripper. Uh, but uh, let's get the casting here into the foot long hot dog jar covered in boiling water. And then coming a tablespoon of caustic soda. You may have seen on my Facebook page recently, um, I showed a picture of myself wearing my new mask. Um, you know, I use a relatively large room. The window is open for ventilation. I use the filter for the paint. But I don't ever wear and have never really worn a face mask until now. And, you know, I've felt over the last year, probably, you know, I've, I don't know what I've breathed in, kind of so many different things and... Um, I think uh, to wear that uh, face mask is probably going to do my lungs good. But anyway, check out the picture if you haven't already on my Facebook page. But uh, getting back to the video, so cleaning up the windscreen and interior into the pledge solution. It goes, and both of those will look nice and shiny. Uh, the base here, I think we could do better than that. I'll give this a polish up using my... Tack life, a couple of different options there, and of course, polishing with the auto sole. So, a little before, and this is after probably about I don't know, maybe 15 20 minutes of polishing and buffing, and uh, yeah, quite happy with that. 
Now, after perhaps sitting in here for around 15-20 minutes, all the paint has just come off of this casting. So there's a 100% removal there. You can see there the paint's in little bits and pieces just floating at the bottom of the jar there. And what I'll do with this uh, front section is just pop it in and then kind of before your very eyes that chrome has disappeared. So here we are. A couple of minutes later, having poured it down the sink, I do have the cleanest drains in London. And here we have, with all of that crusty old chrome removed, and I'll just put it back shortly. The doors here looking good. And yeah, the whole casting there, 100% paint removal today. Like I say, the casting is not the greatest. I do tidy it up a little bit off camera before going into uh, into primer. And of course, I use my steel wire pieces here to polish up. But I'm just going to re-chrome using the Molotow chrome liquid pens. And I've got two different sizes here, a thick one and a thin one. I do prefer this thicker one and it is as simple as kind of just going over the whole lot and there we are just a couple of minutes later re-chromed again but putting that to one side to dry we'll be using the uh, black primer for this one I'm going with a red enamel, kind of like a Ferrari colour. And I felt that the black uh, primer will probably, I don't know, give it a more deeper shine. Unfortunately, I seem to be out of the <laughs> picture somewhat. So there we are. And then I'll do the doors. But yeah, this is the red enamel. I did actually, you know, I wasn't really going to tell you, but this is the second time painting this car. The first time, I don't know what happened, some bubbles come up on the bonnet and I had to strip the whole car down again and, you know, start from the beginning, which is, uh, you know, when you spend a couple of hours to get it into that paint, it's uh, disheartening. To say the very least. So it took another took me an extra day to restrip it, repolish it, reprime it, repaint it, and then give it another 24 hours to dry. And thankfully, the second time round, yeah, we're all good. I do like the enamel paint takes a little bit extra time by cleaning out the airbrush afterwards and I must admit if you do get it anywhere on your hands and so on a little bit more difficult to get it off but of course white spirit is your friend there but yeah there's the first coat and I ended up putting on a few coats but it's now the following day and everything is dry the windscreen there looking good the interior looking good couple of little doors and we've got this nice shiny red real deep kind of uh, uh, red I think it's beautiful of course the base there and I've selected these gold kind of almost like a wire wheels and I just want to put it all back together add in some details but a little reminder of what she look like and this is the result so obviously you've got the kind of chrome front bumper there around the side a little bit of chrome in those door handles Again, the kind of fitment of the, this car and the quality of it is not amazing. But, you know, I did what I could with what I got. Around the back, this is all body colour. But I've added the chrome over that paint. Painted in the uh, towel lights there. And the black number plate recess. 
yeah, coming around the side, obviously you've got the, the wheels in position. Looks like that door is a slightly different red. It looks a bit brighter. Don't know why. Of course, that's what you get sometimes for painting the door separately. But there we go. And then coming around the front, the chrome grille and bumper. And you can just about see the white lights there. But the fit, again, is not 100%. But, you know, this is not Matchbox or Hot Wheels. It's Yak Ming. I don't know. But I quite like this one. But anyway, thanks to my patrons. And thanks very much, everybody else, for watching. And I'm going to leave you with the unboxing now. Cheers. Hi guys, welcome back to another Matchbox Garage video. I am Rob, and today we have this little unboxing courtesy of Stefan Muller from Switzerland. Uh, the first time I've received a package from Switzerland. Stefan, thank you very much. Let's have a look and see what we got. Ah, oh, well, okay. We've got some... Let me uh, have a look here. Just make sure there's no... Nope. Right. Just wanted to make sure, first of all, that there was no um, address or email. So, dear Rob, I found your YouTube channel a few weeks ago and I like it a lot. Well, thank you very much, Stefan, for watching. Uh, since more than 10 years, I own two... Pontiac Firebirds over here in Switzerland and since almost 25 years I'm a big Knight Rider fan aren't we all right um, so I opened a personal blog on Facebook which is uh, facebook.com forward slash trans amch trans uh, trans amch um, to support your projects on YouTube it's an honor to send you some of my old toy cars from my childhood that I think is really cool um, you know, these are his own cars from his own childhood. I think that's uh, very special. I was born in 1985. He's just a, a mere whippersnapper, uh, a couple of years younger than me. Uh, so I had a lot of older Matchbox and Hot Wheels cars. Of course, I'm collecting a lot of die cast models today, but mainly 118 scale. If you like, you can find my collection on facebook.com forward slash uh, Transam CH model car. Um, to the models in this package there are some older cars with dents and scratches which is a bit of me that's what I like and some almost brand new ones the cheaper Hot Wheels come from the surprise bags or from Happy Meals and the both unopened Hot Wheels are both very rare the red one is a 1982 to 1984 Trans Am in the style of a 1980s and the black one you will know it is Kit from Knight Rider that is super cool um, it's up to you if you keep them st uh, stored in the original condition or make customs out of them. I'm sure you know best uh, what's fit in your collection. Thanks for your amazing work on YouTube and I hope you like the models. Would be great to see one or two in your videos. Feel free to make an unboxing video if you like. Here is the unboxing video. Uh, best switches uh, over here from Switzerland, Steve Miller. Uh, my two Firebirds. So I wonder, growing up I had a friend called Steve Miller. Um, but I wonder then, is it uh, Steve Miller's like the kind of English like version or spelling, and Steve Muller is the uh, Swiss. Um, but yeah, yeah, oh, so there you go. These are actually his cars. They are beautiful. Very lucky, very lucky, Steve. Well done. And that picture, along with the letter, will be going on my wall shortly and look at this some some kind of business cards here there we go we'll keep that there for this video eh um, but that's very cool I'll be putting one of these up on my wall as well so let's have a look see what we've got in the box um, an interest to me the first bit is just the wrapping um, course it's from the local store by the oh it's a co-op there you go so so well packed kind of try and tidy up as I go They're pretty cool. 
I think I'm just going to unpack everything and then we'll go through it. We've got quite a few here, guys. Oh, look at that lovely Cavalier GSI there. Okay, I recognise quite a few of these. This is a nice little bundle. So first off, we have this. Cadillac Eldorado, I believe it is. In very good condition. Oh, it's a cat. Oh, wrong. What's an Eldorado? Look at me, sounding all confident. Uh, this is actually a Cadillac um, Alante. Um, I don't know if you guys... Now, I'm a big fan of YouTube. I don't just watch... Um, diecast people, but there's a guy on YouTube that I watch every one of his videos called Hoovies Garage. He's over in America, and he actually owns one of these. Uh, it's in the Wizards Workshop at the moment, but yeah, he's a big he's a big YouTuber, like million subscribers, that kind of thing. Buys and sells hoop tees, but anyway, he's got one of these in real life. Very cool. Obviously, a Cadillac American engine designed and built in Italy. So here's a good little no-name. That's still a fun little thing. So this one's another little uh, no-name little van there. You know, my children play with these cars. I like to think that I keep what I want and what I need and what I would like to restore. And But this is exciting. I've actually got another one of these. Um, I'll have to check the condition of it because this one is in really good condition. And of course this is the, um, well it says on underneath there, a uh, Vectra. I know this as the Cavalier, a Vauxhall Cavalier, uh, GSI 2000. And I also done this in a four x four turbo. I think I might have the turbo version actually. But yeah, I've owned a Cavalier in a two litre, this very shape. So it kind of brings back memories from when I was about 19, I think. It was my third car. I've had over 70 cars. Wow, that is gorgeous. Uh, so the hot ones, Hot Wheels, Mattel, um, 80s, Pontiac Firebird from 1982. That is beautiful. Um, I've got quite a few now in boxes that I've, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be given as, um, you know, in all my unboxing videos. Um, and I will keep this in the box. That is pretty special. And so is this. So this is a 2012 Hot Wheels Premier. And of course this is the uh, Knight Rider uh, or Knight Industries 2000. See the little, oops, was in good condition. Uh, see you got the, uh, the little red bit, just a tiny little bit down there. Um, you got the black, rear light on there um, of course I'm a massive fan of Danny uh, Danny Starcast Disasters and um, he recently just um, restored one of these or customised one of these into a Knight Rider and he, had to, <laughs> he put a couple of um, you know red tail lights on the back no problem but he got so much abuse that he had to repaint it or felt like he had to repaint it and uh, put the you know the black uh, tail lights on there to be fair it looked it looked great in both versions, I don't mind. Uh, to me, it was just extra viewing, but uh, anyway. Um, yeah, that's beautiful. And that will be staying in the packet, at least for now, anyway. Right, so here are the ones that we can actually kind of play with. And, and like I say, my children, my youngest especially, as soon as he sees a Hot Wheels, he says, Daddy, that's a Hot Wheels, that's mine. And uh, I have to hide some of the Hot Wheels from him. But uh, otherwise, you know, he'll be playing with this one. I must admit, these older ones, these are the ones I like to try and keep kind of to myself. And of course, this one is the... I think they're supposed to... It's maybe not uh, working so well. But another car crashes into the back. And of course, that damage. I remember these, not from the back, but when I was a kid, I remember um, like the doors doing that. 
And uh, again, actually, um, talking to Danny, he done one of these. Well, it's a few months ago now, but uh, yeah, he stored one and it, you know, it flipped over. I thought that was really cool. But yeah, that will be going in my in my secret uh, Hot Wheels stash. Oh, and there we are. So this is a from 1983, the best year of all. Uh, it's Hong Kong Hot Wheels, and this one looks like a police car or was a police car. Look, if you can hear a a bell in the background, I apologise. I've got a new little cat, and uh, he's insisted on coming up with me tonight. Um, and he's an exploring matchbox garage area. Hopefully he doesn't scent anywhere. But anyway. So here. Bosh. How's that? That is cool. It's got some nice weight to it as well. And that will be going in my own private stash. It's got the Ford Torino. Um, of course, this is a, it's a lightweight car, a Corgi. Um, from Starsky and Hutch and it would have had um, a beacon on there um, should not say a siren on there as everybody does I mentioned something recently in a previous video that something had a siren on the top and again the abuse down in the comments that's not a siren it's a beacon the sirens the sound or whatever you know but anyway you know what I mean a little corgi a oh, beautiful escort this is um, an escort mark 3 in good condition I like that it's a corgi made in Great Britain plastic base opening uh, doors there interior not bad it's quite interesting obviously some kind of uh, some kind of damage or something broken at the back there it's riding a bit too low look but um, I like that. That could do with some, a nice set of wheels um, and a bit of a respray. Um, this one, just a, a no name made in China. Pretty funky. It's another, it's a Buick Regal or Regal. Is it Regal or Regal? Buick Regal, Buick Regal, um, four door car. Pretty cool. I like that. Oh, this is this is nice. This is nice. This is a Yatming Cadillac Fleetwood. Now, how do you pronounce that? Brom, Brown, Broham, um, Broham. I think I need a bit of help with that one. But um, yeah, opening. Doors there. I reckon underneath all this thick paint, there'll be quite some nice uh, detail. And I just think that on another set of wheels, I wonder. I've got another set of wheels. I wonder whether like a, a pimptastic version of this, you know, with some added details. Hmm. Quite fancy that one. So we have a BMW X5, a modern car. It's got some details on it. Oh, it's a Siku. It's a German-made Siku. Um, I've got a couple of old Siku, but um, none of the modern stuff. And if anybody was going to make a BMW diecast, it should be Siku, right? Oh, this is funky. Um, doesn't say what it is. But this has my youngest son's name written all over it. That's a bit of him there. Very cool. You can imagine being a five-year-old little boy. That's the toy car you're going to play with. Ah, now this, do you know, I think that's where I got the uh, El Dorado kind of stuck in my mind. Because when I did pour this out, I thought, I've restored one of them. Um, I've done one of these Cadillac uh, El Dorados not too long ago. Got the engine poking out of the bonnet there, and uh, I wonder. Let me go and grab it. If you remember me doing this one, it's got the uh, 
the color change in paint on there um, not got the right light or angles on it today but yeah a before and after so yeah that's pretty cool I'll put that one back in my display cabinet and then we have from 1990 so it's got the old style wheels and it's a lovely limo in I'm not too sure whether I uh, I like these colors but you know if it was all taken back painted in black detailed I think that should be pretty cool and then last but not least do you know what I just assumed this was going to be um, a Hot Wheels but it's a Majorette, Majorette 57 Chevy. Probably the best year of Chevy ever made. A little bit of kind of, I say damage or, but yeah, engine there coming out of the bonnet. I think a nice set of wheels will look pretty cool on that. Um, a wheel do some kind of funky uh, custom paint job on this one but right now I'm really feeling this car this Yakming I've never never customized or restored a Yakming before Cadillac Fleetwood that word I think I'm gonna strip this car down add the little bit of detail and uh, have a bit of fun with that and I think I'm going to do that now um, and as the last couple of unboxings have kind of gone I'm going to customise this car and this unboxing is going to be at the end of this video so hopefully this turned out alright and you, and you liked it and you've stuck around the end for this now quite long video I assume um, to watch this unboxing but anyway Steve, thank you very much, sir. I truly appreciate that. Um, and for everybody else, well, I hope you like this one. And uh, any other cars that you did see today, let me know what you want to see customised or restored, and I'll jump on those too. Cheers, guys. <laughs>